okay, we're uncovering our authentic self this month. That's what we're talking about, uncovering the authentic self. So we started the month off with who's there, right? Remember, knock, knock. <laughs> who's there? You are. Okay, your authentic self. Mother's Day, we talked about the mom in me, which is the, the divine feminine that exists in all of us. And last week, our guest speaker talked about tools to use to bring that authentic self out. So today, we're going to get real. So strap on, babies. We're about to get real in here. <laughs> so what does it mean to get real, to get real? You know, the world will tell you it means don't dream, right? Stay real. Keep your feet on the ground. You know, that sort of thing. Don't hope for too much. There was a, there's a children's book called The NeverEnding Story. Did anybody read it? Not the stupid movie, but I mean really read the book because it was fabulous. It was not really a kid's book, but it was great. It was marketed as a, ch a child's book. The little, the little main character was a, a young man named Bastion, and he was reading this book called The NeverEnding Story. He was reading the adventures of Atreyu, who was a boy, in the story, and Bastion started to write himself into his own story. He became the hero in that story. And um, just like, actually, just like we are the hero in the stories that we're writing, for ourselves and in, in our own lives. Bastion wrote himself into this story. And, and all the while, he was, he was being drawn into this never-ending story. His father is telling him, be reasonable. You know, his father always told him, you got to keep both your feet on the ground. You have, to be, you have to be realistic. His father never told him, reach for the stars. You know, you can do anything you want. He just kept telling him, be grounded, be realistic, stay logical, don't reach for more. You can't do that. Get real, get real. And how many times has that been used in our lives, right? Get real. How many times we heard it to keep, to keep us in our place, to keep us in our place, to keep us not wanting more, to keep us from not wanting too much or dreaming too big or hoping for more to protect us from disappointment. Sometimes it was said to protect us from disappointment, to bring us back to reality, to squash our aspirations. Be realistic, right? Be realistic. What are the odds of blah, 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 you know, fill in the blank. We've all been on the receiving end of this, haven't we? You know, but what are you going to do to support yourself? You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, right? And, and, I'm sa and well intended souls, you know, our parents told us this, you know, but what are you going to do to support yourself? It's to keep us safe and it keeps us small. So, so why do you want to do that? You know, those are the questions that we're asked. Why do you want to do that? What are you going to do that for? You don't know how to do that. How are you going to get that done? How are you going to do that? You know, trying to figure out things, trying to figure out how things are going to go has crushed countless dreams. Trying to figure out the how can crush countless dreams. Because what do we say? We say the how is the domain of spirit. How is the domain of spirit? We don't know the how of it. So the, when the world says to us, get real, what it's saying is, stick to the facts. Stick to the facts, you know? Based on past performance, you haven't ever done that before, so what makes you think you can do that now? Right? It's based on the facts. That's what the world says, but what do we know? We know principle is not bound by precedent, right? That is, that is the phrase Thomas Troward used. That is the phrase that Ernest Holmes latched onto as truth. Principle is not bound by precedent. Weird statement, positive truth. So when you break it down, what is it exactly that we're saying? Principle, we're saying principle, this teaching, this philosophy, principle, the thing itself, God, is all there is. There is nothing more. There's nothing more. That is, that is the basic principle. And so, so use the word God or don't use the word God. If you're not comfortable with God, use something else. Use source. Use, use first cause. Use Bob. I like to use Bob every now and then. Use whatever it is that makes you comfortable, you know? I'm, I'm not particularly religious in that way. I don't really care what you call it. It's source. It's, it's first cause. It's divine mind. It's so whatever you want to use. But that's the principle. That is the principle. This sentient energy that we're surrounded by, that, w that is within us, that has created everything. It, source, is not bound by precedent. 
That's what it means, right? Principle is not bound by precedent. So bound, it means it's not limited by. This energy that we are and that everything is, is not bound by precedent. Precedent, anything that has gone before. Anything that has gone before it. The history of similar events. Right? When you know when you find yourself in a new in a new situation, what do you do? Your mind immediately goes in through that little Rolodex in your mind, right? This is like what? This is like what? Oh, this is like this. And you pull it out, right? And this is like this. So that you can get more familiar with the situation you're in. But this is from the past. And what we're saying is that the principle, spirit, is not bound by anything, is not limited by anything that came before it. So no matter what your past experience was, this one is a new experience. It's new, it's whole, it's complete, it's unique. It's never happened before, and it's not bound or limited by anything that happened in the past. So when the world says get real, what the world is telling you is stick to what you know. Stick to what happened to you. Stick to the things you're already experienced. But what we know in religious science is that that mental equivalent is the thing that we've never experienced before, right? How do we get something new if we don't do anything new other than what we know we knew? Wait, okay, never mind. You know what I mean. <laughs> you have to have a bigger idea in order to manifest a greater expression, a greater demonstration. Well, that, that better idea, that newer idea, is something you've never experienced before. That's your mental equivalent. You know, and the world will tell you, but you've, you've never done that before. How are you going to do that? What's changed that all of a sudden you can do that if you've never done that before? Get real. And what we're saying is, yeah, we're going to get real. We're going to get really real because we're going to shed the limited idea of who we are. When we say get real, what are we saying? We're, we are saying when we say get real, we're saying get truth. Get truth. Because that's what's real about us. We are living in a spiritual universe. We are spiritual beings. That's where our power lies. It's not, in, it's not in the conditions. What do we know about the conditions? They change like that. Conditions change like that. What is eternal is truth. First cause, divine mind, spirit, whatever you want to call it, is the source and the substance and the supply of all life. There's the source, the substance, and the supply of all life. And so whatever out pictures, Whatever conditions we manifest, whatever demonstrations we experience are the product of our thought. The product of that predominant thought. That thought backed by feeling, committed into form by repetition. That's what we know, yes? The thing itself, it is triune in nature, it in out pictures according to the divine creative process. Thought backed by feeling, committed into form by our repetition of it. We affirm and affirm and affirm what is true for ourselves, and it comes to pass. Yes? It comes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Testify, brother. Yes, it comes to pass. In 1988, Peter McWilliams published a book, and the title was You Can't Afford the Luxury of a Negative Thought. Ooh. And it sounded kind of creepy when I first heard it. You can't afford the luxury of a negative thought. And I went, ooh, okay. Made me sort of a little superstitious, you know, a little nervous. But I read it anyway. It was a good book. It really was good. Anyway, he said this in the book. He said, the cure is simple. One, spend more time focusing on the positive things in your life. Accentuate the positive. Wasn't there a song like that years ago? Okay. All right. Number one, spend more time focusing on the positive things in your life. Accentuate the positive. Two, spend less time thinking negatively. Eliminate the negative. And number three, enjoy each and every moment you have. Latch on to the affirmative. Eliminate, uh, accentuate the positive. Eliminate the negative. Latch on to the affirmative. Three rules for life. There you go. That's it. And if you don't, if you go away today with nothing else but those three, you know, it's going to change lives. It's going to change lives. So we have to speak truth. It says it right there. We must speak 
truth, not the current trend, not the conditions of the world, not the stuff that's out picturing, not the complaints of frustration, because we haven't yet manifested what we think we should be manifesting in the time period that we think we should be manifesting it. We must speak only truth. Mm, breathe that in. Now that's simple. And sometimes it's not easy. Sometimes it's not easy. Simple, yes. Easy, I don't know, it depends. For me, it depends on how much sleep I've had. It depends on what unforeseen events popped up and hit me in the face. It depends. It depends on what button is being pushed in the moment, <laughs> right? Maybe one of those that I didn't know that I had that was being lit up, you know, it depends. But then what we do is we get back to the truth as quickly as we can. We speak only truth. We act only truth. If it's not true, don't say it. If it's not you, don't do it. This is really simple. Again, it's really simple. But sometimes it's not easy. Ernest Holmes said this in the Science of Mind textbook. He said, if we know that the power with which we are dealing is principle and not personality, if we know and believe that mind is the one actor, cause, effect, substance, intelligence, truth, and power that there is, if we know we are the real embodiment of that, then we demonstrate. If we lack, if we're poor, if we're without friends, if we're without opportunity, we should be sure to erase this from our consciousness, any sense of lack. He goes on to say, we erase thought from consciousness by pouring in the opposite thought. That is your mental equivalent, right? This thought meets the other and neutralizes its effect. It rubs it out, and I love this, you're gonna love it. It rubs it out just as we rub a chalk mark off a board. We must maintain a consistent, positive, aggressive mental attitude in the truth. That's simple. That's clear, we can understand that easily. And then there's the practice. Then there's the practice of it. We have to practice it daily. We have, to, we have to abstain from the negative. We have to stay away from the water cooler conversations. We have to stay away from the, you know, ain't it awful conversations. That is not truth. It could be a current trend. It could be a condition. It could be a fact. But facts are just conditions we all agree on. That's all. We all agreed the world was flat at one point. It's not the truth, it's just a fact we all agreed on. I live on Staten Island, I grew up on Staten Island. This is like 100 billion years ago. <laughs> life, life. And you know, and there was this, there was this weightlifter that I knew. Mm -mm -mm. And he also owned a beauty supply store, interesting. I don't think I stood a chance with him. <laughs> anyway, his name was Frank. He was just a wonderful, lovely man. <sighs> okay, but you, I would go into the store, beauty supply store, I'd be getting, you know, conditioner or whatever, blow dry, whatever it was, and you know, you'd say, hi, hey, Frank, how you doing today? And he would go, I'm fabulous. Just like that with a, and his, <laughs> oh. anyway. <sighs> And he was, and he was fabulous, you know? And every single time you walked into that store, and it didn't matter who walked into that store, everybody would walk into that store and they'd go, hey, how you doing? And he'd say, I'm fabulous. Just like that, oh my God, with his big muscles and his white teeth, and he was just gorgeous, just gorgeous. <sighs> and you know, even when he wasn't like, what we would consider really fabulous, you know, it's like, he had like the worst head cold in the world. And I walked into there one day and I said, hey, Frank, how's it going? How are you doing? Oh, fabulous. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he was, you know, he still was. Had the worst cold there was, but man, he was still fabulous. <laughs> and you know, he's the kind of guy that's like, you walked out feeling better than you did when you walk in. You know those people? They just, they, their fabulosity just, you know, <laughs> lights up the room. He was always fabulous and he demonstrated fabulous. His get real, his set point was fabulous. That's what his set point was. It was amazing. 
And you know, this is, this is why we do the Miracle Minute at the end of our celebrations on Sunday. We want to hear the fabulosity that's going on in the community. That Miracle Minute is the time when we listen to each other and our demonstrations that this works, that this works. We hear, we testify, you know, that's really what we're doing. We're testifying to the truth that this philosophy works. And it does. When we hear that reinforcement, so even if we're praying something, even if we're meditating, even if we're affirming, even if we have affirmations plastered all over the wall and we haven't had the demonstration yet, we know it's coming. We know it's coming. Why? Well, because somebody over here had a demonstration. Somebody over here, somebody over there. That's why we do it, to reinforce that this works. It keeps me positive, it keeps me grounded, even if I haven't had my own demonstration, I know you had one, or you had one. And I know mine's coming. That's what witnessing is all about. Seeing, hearing, knowing, truth demonstrated. Seeing, hearing, knowing, truth demonstrated. It keeps us afloat, keeps us in our practice, when maybe nothing seems to be happening at the, at the level of the condition, but stuff is happening in the invisible realm. Stuff is always happening. We plant a seed, we don't know what's happening to it. But something's happening to it. It's breaking open, it's, it's, it's coming toward the light, it's coming toward the warmth. But it's all happening below our level of awareness. So we, we rely on that power and presence that goes beyond the facts and the figures of the world. And we stand in that timeless, eternal truth, regardless of the way things look. Did you hear that? Regardless of the way things look. Because things can look awful. Let's face it. Things can look awful at times. And we still have to stand in the truth, regardless of how it looks. Didn't get that job you applied for? That's all right. There's a better one coming. You know it. I know it. Truth knows it. Stand in the truth. Had that horrible breakup with that person? It's okay. Because each one of you is going on to your better and, and better good and truth. We must speak truth only. We must act truth only. If it's not true, don't say it. If it's not you, don't do it. Which means you don't, don't have your yes be no, don't have your no be yes. Know what's yours to do. And the only way we know what's ours to do is through our spiritual practice. We practice. We go into meditation. We sit in the, in the, in the quiet, right? Sitting in meditation sitting around waiting for nothing to happen. That's what we're doing. And we sit there and we listen to that still small voice. We have to get real about getting real. We have to live truthfully, boldly, out loud. We have to forgive often and easily. <gasps> I said the F word. <laughs> we have to forgive often and easily. We get to the place where forgiveness is unnecessary. The very idea that forgiveness is necessary for us implies we have been injured or hurt in some way, okay? When we get to the point that we really truly embody, we are whole, perfect, and complete as spirit made us whole, perfect and complete as spirit made us, how powerful we are, that we are simply an activity that spirit is having, forgiveness is unnecessary because we can't be anything else but whole. So how could any harm have ever come to us to begin with? We have to love unconditionally. We can do it. We can do this. We are spiritual beings. That is all there is to us. That is our natural state. When we're talking about getting real, that's what we're talking about. Shedding all the ideas of limitation, shedding all of the, the self-imposed beliefs that we have, and taking on that spiritual being that, that lives within us, and living from that. That's getting real. Eliminate the negative. Accentuate the positive. Latch on to the affirmative. 
get back to that authentic self. Uncover that authentic self. That's truly who we are. Everything else we acquired along the way. You want to get real? Get in touch with that. Get in touch with that sacred center where we know of our wholeness. We know of our wholeness. And then we greet each other in that wholeness. And then we know of each other in that wholeness. There is nothing else to us but that. That is the truth of who we are. So get real. Thank you very much.